Hi, and welcome to Lesson 8 on Electromagnetic Waves in Optical Media 1. In this block of three lessons, we are going to describe how uh, electromagnetic waves and electromagnetic radiation interact with matter. And in particular, we will be interested in the propagation properties of electromagnetic waves in dielectrics and in metals. So let's begin with step one, which is an introduction to the block. Let's re-examine our original motivation. It may, you may remember in module one on the overview of quantum communication, we were interested uh, um, about geometric optics. In particular, we wanted to know how light propagates down uh, fiber. So we, were, we wanted to know what happens at the interface between two dielectric media. For example, it could be air and glass or some other dielectric media. And we were considering what is the angle of reflection and angle of refraction over here, given some angle of incidence theta i. Also, we said that some of the wave gets um, reflected, some of the wave enters into the other medium and becomes refracted. But we didn't really have any machinery in calculating these coefficients of reflection and transmission. At the same time, we had no notion of polarization. Simply, we did not know how to add that into our formalism. Therefore, we can conclude that geometric optics is not sufficient for our purposes. After all, we just spent a couple of lessons deriving the fact that a light and electromagnetic radiation is a wave. So, we need to be able to describe this phenomena using wave optics. How do we do it? With our old friends, the Maxwell's equations. There is one catch. These Maxwell's equations that we derived are for free space. They're not really designed to capture the behavior of light and electromagnetic radiation in general in a particular optical medium. So, we still have some work ahead of us. In the current lesson, we're going to consider how electromagnetic waves propagate in optical media. Also, we will ask the question, what happens at the interface of such media? And what is the description of this behavior in terms of wave optics? And that will lead us to four boundary conditions that all electric and magnetic fields must obey when the electromagnetic wave is traveling from one medium into the other. And at the end of the lesson, uh, this will naturally lead us to uh, polarization of light. So far, we have implicitly considered linear polarization of light, but we have not really covered other types of polarization, which we will see at the end of this lesson. And it will lead us to a beautiful description of uh, general polarization of light in terms of its elliptical polarization. In the next lesson, lesson 9, we will continue with our discussion of uh, EM waves in dielectrics, and we will use the boundary conditions to derive what are known as Fresnel equations. Then, this will allow us to finally co uh, calculate the refraction, reflection, and transmission coefficients when light travels from one dielectric medium into another. And in the latter part of Lesson 9, we will consider how electromagnetic waves interact with metals. We will see that there is a very big difference between how light behaves when it's incident on a dielectric medium or if it's incident on a metal medium. And finally, we will conclude with a discussion of hollow metallic waveguides and how this affects the propagation properties of light. Finally, in lesson 10, this will be our first jumping off point into quantum mechanics. We will start to consider limitations of wave optics and in particular, the photoelectric effect. So we will consider how light interacts with uh, a matter and we will discuss why wave optics cannot explain many of the phenomena that we can actually observe in everyday life and in laboratory. And we will conclude the lesson with basics of light detection, and in particular, we will talk about photomultiplier tubes. So, let's begin. <laughs> 